Okay, so first of all, uh, uh, I discussed last time how this course will work at uh, the evaluation process we discussed and what will be the method of teaching. Basically, we'll discuss a topic and uh, in you know, based on that topic, we'll give you some questions in the end, which you will solve on teacher matrix. And the during the lecturing process, it will not be just one way lecture, it will be interactive. That is the main advantage of having individual classes every time differently. Otherwise, classes one recorded can be there forever. So we would like to have your original inputs, what you think about a particular topic being discussed. It may be there on the net somewhere, but uh, you come up with your own thoughts and we will discuss with them. I'll give my views, you give your views, and we will combine our common wisdom and arrive at some conclusions. So we'll develop a conceptual understanding of intelligence and artificial intelligence and the methods to implement them. So the, the, the first aspect is the concept, what, why it is intelligent, what is intelligence, and then how it is uh, uh, spoken in the computational language, and then how it is implemented in a particular algorithm or in a particular language, what are the tools and resources available to uh, achieve those tasks. And then during the discussions, we will also come across what are the limitations of one method, if you were to do this originally from your own raw intelligence, how would you do a particular task and how the standard artificial intelligence experts have evolved to develop that concept into a more refined and in a way which is state of the art. That will be the approach primarily that we will adopt. So first of all, since uh, we are at a um, formal discipline here, so I'll introduce you a couple of books that we can follow. There will be generally guiding books. So we follow the contents from one of those books and then other books, some of them, which you can use as reference to implement things that we are trying to do here. And uh, in, in addition to this text, we will also come up our own original thoughts and ideas, which is may not be original in that sense that they may not be contained in this book, but we'll take from other resources and we'll discuss with them. You are welcome to give your inputs and uh, discuss this freely here. I don't guarantee that every question that you raise here will be answered, but we'll definitely find some way, some route to reach the answer in this class. So with this, I'll start sharing my screen. So on my screen, I have today, I have a very few slides. So that will open up the discussion on the topic of artificial intelligence gradually. And um, I have to make it full screen, just a moment. Okay, so can you see my slides now? Slides are moving. Can you see my slides moving, full screen? Yes, yeah. sir. Okay, great. Okay, so the link for the lectures that will be available ultimately on the YouTube, that uh, that is my lab website, that is called the SciVi Lab. So the channel name is also SciVi Lab. You can access it later on if you miss something and if you want to repeat. So for the textbooks, we'll follow this uh, textbook, Artificial Intelligence, a Map Modern Approach. This is now the fourth edition that I'll be following. This is written by Stuart Russell and Peter Norwick. So this book, you might find access probably to PDF. You have to check that. And uh, most of my slides will be self-contained. You may not necessarily have to go back to the book, but you may have to um, access additional material on the topic because in a, in a short classes of one hour or less, we cannot introduce all finer aspects, but we initiate you into thinking about a particular topic and you can supplement them through your own study. Then uh, in order to implement certain ta artificial intelligence tasks, there are some two books uh, for the people who like to code and who like to solve problems in practice. There is one, uh, both of them are for Python programmers. So one is the Python uh, beginner's guide to artificial intelligence. This is 2018 edition, which is written by uh, Dixit, Dennis, and others. And Matthew Lemons is the last author. 
So this book, I'll, I'll give you these slides. Uh, I'll share these slides with you after this class through Teacher Matrix, and you can then collect these books and follow them whenever we discuss them. And otherwise also, even if we are not using all the contents from these books, it is a good idea if you want to be experts in artificial intelligence to try to solve most of the questions that have been discussed in these books. So another book, which is a little more advanced than the, the one that I just showed you is Artificial Intelligence by Example. So this book also can be followed, which will give you, this also has a Kindle and paperback edition. You can buy online, this is the price if you have to buy. So um, for the topic today, the scientific topic we discussed today is the question, when we talk about artificial intelligence, the word is made up of, uh, the, this is a couple of words here, so artificial and intelligence. So we often as engineers and programmers, we implement AI techniques without really knowing what intelligence is and what has gone behind the methods we are using. So we'll try to develop that understanding. So uh, intelligence is a topic that has been of interest for a long time, particularly for psychologists. And why do you think people were interested in studying intelligence? Can somebody tell me? We'll come to what intelligence is, but first of all, why would somebody want to know what is intelligence and what could have been the original motivation for people to study intelligence in a more systematic manner? Can increase somebody... the main power to uh, means, uh, means uh, we can always use that system to think something. Like we humans can do, we need to have fun, but those systems, we can employ them to use mm -hmm. day and night to think something which can be useful for humans. So what you're saying is that so that our expert systems or our machines can rely on uh, artificial intelligence, uh, intelligent techniques and try to solve problems faster or perhaps more efficiently. So essentially you are saying that to improve the skills of machines, people were studying intelligence originally yeah and do i can i have thoughts from more people uh, i guess uh, it was a way sort of uh, uh, to screen people in a, some sense that who are intelligent or who are not like we have standardized test iq test so mm. that might be a motivation to screen out people who are intelligent so so as to we would need a definition of intelligence that who is intelligence who is intelligent excellent yes Great. So both of these answers are interesting. We'll, I'll sum up these that answers that, that are coming from you. Any more thoughts? Sir, so as to uh, they can know what is intelligence and they have, may uh, use it to spread to others, like not a few people who are intelligent, just uh, spread it to the masses so that mm -hmm. everyone can be smart. Okay. So the third point, this is interesting. So this raises another question. Can intelligence be taught? Can somebody who is not intelligent today, can that person be made more intelligent? Is that, you, that is what you're saying? That if we learn about the rules of intelligence, we can make others who are not so intelligent, we can make them intelligent. That's what you're saying, right? Pushpak was it who said this, right? Just trying to rephrase your uh, statement so that I understand it better. Pushpak, is that what you said? I lost you, can't hear you. Okay, so any other next person who would like to say something about this? So, so far we have got three inputs. One that says that we people were interested in learning about intelligence so that they can uh, implement the rules of intelligence on machines and computers and do, these, do certain tasks more efficiently. Second opinion that has come is that intelligence was primarily, originally may have been studied to screen people and to do certain selections. And this is for screening and to ranking people in terms of their intelligence. Uh, if, I, if I can extend this uh, argument, that's what came from Aditya Jha, I think. Yeah, is that correct? Yes, sir. So I- Yeah, yeah, please. I have one more, one more thought about okay. this. I think, yes. yeah, uh, it could be that because we think of ourselves humans, we, because mm -hmm. we think, of ourselves that we are uh, sort of different from other beings around us in a mm. way that we are intelligent. So it can yeah. also be an inquiry into ourselves that to know that what is intelligence so as to we can know what set us up, sets us apart from other beings that surround us. So very that, nice. So you say that this is 
for some kind of an emotional reason that people want to learn about themselves and introspect and reflect on their own and, and, uh, personalities and human beings as in, in general. So for those spiritual and those uh, kind of uh, metaphysical reasons, people were interested in understanding intelligence for the intellectual sake of learning themselves, right? If that is the correct rephrasing or there's something that I misunderstood. Yes, sir. generally. Yeah. Okay. So, and so this was the second uh, set of inputs I got. And the third set of inputs was that, um, what was that? Third came from Pushpak and then he went quite after this. That, uh, yeah, so third was similar to the first one. In the first one, uh, I think, uh, who is speaking first? Who was the first person who spoke? I, it was Rahul. Rahul, 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 Rahul Yadav was saying. Yeah. So Rahul Yadav said in the beginning that uh, this we learn about intelligence so that we can make our machines intelligent. Is that right? Yeah, so that means, yeah. yes, means uh, uh, that our, our we mechanical can, systems, mechanical uh, and computational <coughs> systems, more intelligent. That's why we want to learn them. So the third yes, answer sir. that came from Pushpak is similar and along those lines. But instead of saying machine, making machines intelligent, he says that we learn it to make human beings who are not otherwise as intelligent. We want to train them to become more intelligent. So these are the three interesting inputs. We'll summarize, summarize and I will uh, share with you uh, what I have read about it and uh, how we can connect the, the three different tasks. Any more inputs coming? Please speak out. Please distinguish yourself in the class. It helps. Okay, I'll do with this. I'll come later on what intelligence actually is. We, let us assume we know something about intelligence and we have certain idea about intelligence. So indeed, the most important tasks, more, most important reason that people have studied intelligence originally was indeed for screening purpose and understanding what in, how intelligent uh, beings work. That it was not as much to make uh, less intelligent people more intelligent or machines more intelligent because uh, whether we can make machines intelligent came much later. And when the idea of artificial intelligence came, I'm, I was not discussing artificial intelligence in the beginning. I'm just discussing intelligence. So when Turing performed certain tests and he tried to link the way the machines work and the way the intelligent minds or human beings work, can there be some exchange? And then people were trying to develop some certain machines such as Skinner was trying to develop. So these many psychologists were trying to develop certain machines, certain quiz boxes, certain question boxes and training systems which can in incorporate what would otherwise be done by intelligent human beings. So, but that came later. In the beginning, the most important purposes were, of course, to screen because schools have to admit and students who come to the school in the early school, they have to be tested. And because in the long run, they will be studying very complex tasks. Can we predict whether they will be able to learn that in the future? Can we predict that this student, if we admit this student who will perform better and if we perform, take another student that will perform poorer. So, and can we justify this? So the question as uh, um, Aditya also said is that many IQ tests were developed. So IQ tests were developed to actually quantify this intelligence. But initial group of people who were interested in intelligence was you can arguably can say that educationists were the first people who were interested in this and education administrators. So uh, why educationists were interested and why educational administrators were interested, educational administrators were interested so because they want to take the best students in, the, in their schools. They want to give them higher ranking. They wanted to support their education. They wanted to fund their education and try to give them the best opportunities so they can excel and therefore the society can improve. And why was educationist interested? Can you think of more reasons why educationists would be interested in intelligence? So that they know how to impart knowledge. Yeah. So they can develop the best methods to transfer knowledge. An intelligent person in their definition, if we put, if we assume that we know some kind of intelligence, we'll discuss whether there's only one kind of intelligence or there are many kinds of intelligence. If we understand the intelligent behavior of a student, we can devise the best strategies to transfer learning, to educate that student. So this is similar to what one of you said that uh, we were trying to learn intelligence so that we can make people who are not so intelligent, uh, more intelligent. So it is 
actually we cannot make people more intelligent this is the idea of intelligence is not defined in this way that intelligence is being improved but people who are not intelligent they can definitely copy and learn the methods which are otherwise used by intelligent people on their own so in that sense we will institutionalize the practices of the intelligent people and we can train other people who are not originally thinking that way in that intelligent way but we can develop the, uh, the skill set, the practices, the reflexes in those people also to behave, to work in the same way as intelligent would do the same thing. So they would like to uh, do a, say on this screen, you have here the jigsaw puzzle. So an inter intelligent per person will perhaps use some methods to solve this jigsaw. But uh, when we study intelligence, we would try to organize this information. We would try to certain, form certain rules how to solve a, a jigsaw puzzle. And perhaps once we have framed these rules, this which may be intelligent rule, under what conditions to join the two uh, pieces of the uh, jigsaw, or under which case we should not join. So those rules, which are implicitly there, represented in the human brain, these rules, once we put together in the form of uh, intelligent rules, then they can be taught to persons who are not originally that intelligent. So we are not, in, in fact, increasing the intelligence, what we are doing, what we are able to do is we are able to learn certain tasks, how intelligent way to, what is the intelligent way of doing that task. And then this, this particular way we can teach to people who would not originally discover those. So in some sense, this is an attempt to learn from intelligent people that the way they perform a certain task and transfer it to others. So this can be one objective. So educationists would also want to do this. Educationists would design many things about their educational program, educational plan, according to the intelligence uh, and the different uh, personality traits of their students. So they will, what kind of examples should they give? What should be the pace of the lecture? At what pace should they speak? What should be the vocabulary? Should, be very, should it be very sophisticated? Should it be simple? And very different aspects of psychological aspects, the educationist was when education was trying uh, was being formalized the learning methods were being formalized people were studying how people how other people learn and the educationists were trying to de devise learning methods and uh, the me best methods of transferring learning they were interested in learning intelligence as one of the key pillars of the educational practices so nice very good so i think uh, all of uh, you gave very good inputs and what intelligence could have been why people were interested in intelligence now comes the question, when people started getting interested in intelligence, what did they find? They, will have, they have to first define what they mean by intelligence. So now I ask this question to you. Some of the answers are written here on the screen. You can see them. But let me ask you, without looking at this screen or without bothering about what is written on the screen, what do you think is intelligence? Thinking in a way which helps in solution of problems. Uh, yeah, Rahul, can you say again? Thinking in a way which helps in solution of problems. Thinking in a way. Thinking is intelligence, you mean? Yes, well, if the output is what, uh, if the output is in sync with what we need, then uh, we derive at that output by thinking only. And means mm -hmm. that process can be called uh, intelligent or intelligent. Okay. Harsh is saying, trying to say something. In, in, sir, with making the, rational decisions. Okay. Yeah. Sir, okay. Sir, uh, please, please, please just a moment. Give on information. Fine, Matla, please uh, don't uh, speak. Uh, no, no, please don't speak over each other. Let, let one person finish and then you raise your hand. I will ask you to ask, ask you by name to speak. Okay. No, so it will be more organized. So Rahul, you have finished? Okay. Yeah, Harsh, now you can speak. So making rational decisions on the basis of uh, given information. Matlab, jo hume ab tak pata hai, uske basis pe rational decision banana. Baad mein chahe galat bhi ho jaye, kyunki kuch naya hi hume information milne par. Lekin ab tak jo hume pata hai, uske basis pe hum sahi decision le. Jo hamara decision making. So you you mean the intelligence is the ability to take decisions? Right? Yeah. So jo ab tak ki information ke hisab se rational ho jo. Okay. So Aditya, what is your? You have also written in the chat box, but you can speak it out. Hmm. No, sir. I I wasn't the one who wrote. Hmm. Say again? Yeah, yeah you're yes, not think, many thinking along. Oh, you already spoken. Thinking yeah. along with positive result. No, sir, th that wasn't me. Okay. 
so it is written by the name of aditya another, another aditya okay yeah yeah so sir uh, in a most so, general uh, way better of... better better don't write in the chat box because then we'll have two modes to deal with just speak on uh, raise your hand i'll call your name and then you speak what you're saying so everybody hears you okay so aditya you can speak and then others who want to speak please raise your hand i will pick you uh, I'll, i'll hand over the mic to you aditya is first here yeah. sir the most general that i can think of intelligence is to come up with new approaches ability to so i am just trying to define uh, uh, summarize your uh, or formalize what you are saying so the last discussion was uh, about solving problems so uh, ability to solve problems is intelligence and what you are saying is that thinking in generalizing ability to generalize things is yeah, thinking is what you are saying terms, yeah no i mean when we should see uh, one important thing about scientific principle is that whatever definitions we devise should be operationalizable we should be able to operationalize them so if we say intelligence is about thinking we cannot trace thinking right we cannot know what person is thinking we cannot quantify it so Two in terms seconds. of yeah yeah My just definition is not about thinking no about... let me come let me complete so when i'm saying what as a user i expect how should we devise any definition that we should be able to measure it ultimately if we define intelligence in some way next term as next goal will be for a scientist or an engineer would be to measure that so you are saying something uh, you complete yourself please but i just defined the yes. re- range in which we have to explore our answer here yeah yes sir suppose we have a given problem right so a person if uh, i were to define intelligence i would look at the ways different ways that he approaches the problem uh, in suppose he goes with one approach he fails that's one way then he goes on to the next way i what i what i have observed in my eyes that intelligent people would be able to uh, uh, come up with uh, different new ways more than the people who are not that intelligent to solve a particular problem and oh. that is how i would okay. define very interesting so what you are saying is very interesting it will come up to come later on in another discussion so what we are saying is this is called creativity basically so having uh, different approaches to solve the same problem which are, which did not exist which we did not learn and which are not obvious this is often uh, will fall in the category of creativity so you will find a creative alternatives for an existing solution and uh, uh, that for now we'll keep it outside the intelligence because uh, of course it is a very important component of intelligence but uh, this uh, involves creative intelligence and people have this studied creative intelligence separately from the problem solving or uh, the conventional intelligence uh, let me take more inputs from others so brinda you want to say something i think intelligence is uh, learning from experiences and applying it uh, in the future uh, situations okay and- learning so learning ability so because we are quantifying trying to do quantifying intelligence so let us rephrase it to say that learning is the uh, the intelligence is the learning ability of an individual so two solid uh, thoughts have come forward one is the ability to solve problems second is to learn from examples from our experiences that is intelligence third one was about finding alternative ways of solving problems but either we put it together with the solving problems or we'll uh, as i uh, already remarked we'll study this as a separate part as an as a creative ability how what is creativity and how it is different from intelligence we'll discuss all that also in short in 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 the next class yeah, so these two are there for let us put them together and let us have more thoughts from others mohit you are saying something so taking decisions and improving the decisions over the time like learning that the my decision the early decision was wrong then taking that decision in consideration and improving the next decision which i am taking a- ability to take decisions right yeah so you take a- ability it. to take decisions with certain target in mind right because there is a certain goal you want to achieve yes. and for that you take a decision which would be uh, basically the best route to uh, achieve your target so uh, this can actually we'll see that this can actually be framed as a problem uh, problem solving approach so making decision is some sort of a problem solving and we will learn some of the artificial intelligence algorithms or methods where the problem of finding making a decision or pr- problem of finding the best approach to so- achieve certain goal 
is uh, fundamental to understanding AI. Mm, that is, but that is, let us put this together with this uh, definition, this part of the definition, that is the ability to solve problems. And ability to solve problems may involve uh, decision making. Yeah, more of you. So I'm happy because so many of you are participating. Shubham Singh. Uh, good morning, sir. Yes. Uh, so intelligence could be just the ability to think uh, uh, efficiently and in an optimized manner. Uh, thinking in an optimized manner. Thinking in, a, in an optimized manner. Or, think, or finding a solution which is optimal uh, route to reach a target. Yes. Right. So this will also go in this category, ability to solve problems. Excellent. I mean, uh, you people really are, uh, are intelligent. You are giving the right inputs. Uh, I'm very impressed with you. Uh, more of you. Sir? Yeah. I have a doubt also. Yes, please. Uh, sir, the ability to is, solve problems... Who is, who is speaking? Shubham. Uh, Shubham, yes, please. Uh, so the ability to solve problem, uh, I think it should not be a part of intelligence. Hmm. Okay. Uh, it should Bye. be a consequence of intelligence because to solve problems, one doesn't need to be intelligent. Okay. I can, I like, I cannot, uh, it can be possible that I'm not intelligent yet. I can solve some problems. Okay. That's an interesting point. Uh, noted. So uh, you're saying that the ability of solving problems is not sufficient to, uh, to be called intelligence. That is, in fact, I agree that there is a possibility that you might solve problems by just having a reference list. And then once you have the checklist and you fit, you know that for such and such problems, this is a solution. And through, from the database, you pick up something and the problem can be solved without using any intelligence. Yes. Right? That is the kind of thing in your mind? Yes. Or we can learn it over time slowly by someone uh, like a Yeah. So around. if we learn, we cannot learn if we are not intelligent. So ability to learn is intelligence, uh, no doubt. And uh, if, if you, we are not intelligent, if we do not have the ability to learn, whatever, howsoever long you keep that person in, you, that person will not learn because intelligence is required to learn. So that has already come on your screen, the first and second parts, the first, the ability to learn. So ability to learn is, has been regarded as a very important uh, definition or trait of intelligence. And second part, solving problems. Why solving problems is still called intelligences because solving problems does not, uh, 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 the kind of solving problems we are talking here about is solving novel problems. So if you have not seen a problem before and you are able to solve that problem, without intelligence, you cannot do. So you can find out from a database or from a reference list answers to the questions. So finding an answer to an existing question is not in this definition of solving problem is not called problem solving. Problem solving is seeing a situation for the first time mm -hmm. and, and based on that, you are able to solve that problem. So it is not picking up an answer. It is not uh, answer search. We will come to this in exact when we discuss the algorithms, how we create sometimes we can find a good answer by just checking the list of uh, possible options. And from a exhaustive search of the outputs, you can find out the answer. So that is not intelligence as such, but that is in the field of artificial intelligence. This is also one approach sometimes used some, sometimes it is not, uh, you do not, sh you should not use intelligence to solve problems. Sometimes certain tasks in a mechanical environment or some repetitive task when you are doing, you should be able to do without applying your intelligence. And if you apply your intelligence, maybe you will spoil it or you might uh, try different approaches if you try an alternative. People have already optimized it. And in certain duties and jobs, you will find that you are not encouraged to think creatively. You are, you are encouraged to just implement what has been instructed to you, what the rules have been optimized. So the job of, in that case, the job of finding new methods or optimizing solutions is assigned to somebody else. So in, in industry environment, you may, have, uh, you may have some familiarity. The task of thinking creatively, the task of optimizing solutions are assigned to different people. And there is another group of people who will just implement uh, those, um, uh, the ways, the methods that have been finalized. So uh, to summarize, Shubham, so the, when we are talking of ability to solve problems here, we are not just talking about finding an answer to an existing question from an existing question answer bank. It is about solving novel problems, which the user, which the subject has not seen them before. So using the information that he has, using the uh, memory that he has, we will come back to the role of memory in intelligence in the next class. So, but here it is sufficient to say that uh, having the memory uh, uh, already certain things in your memory, you will be able to solve problems, maybe in a totally novel way.
so that is why we keep it here are you are you happy with this answer yes, yes sir okay okay great so uh, two of these you understood very well and you uh, discussed it very well very good the third point that we have not discussed out of these yet is the ability to recognize problems uh, can somebody elaborate this point what we, are, we have not discussed out of all the discussions that came so far we have not seen the ability to recognize problems as a form of intelligence can some of you give me some thoughts like, about what it would be like asking questions yes asking yes. questions also is one of them yeah can you give me some more examples about recognizing problems shuman yes yeah so sir uh, like intelligence should constitute the ability to recognize problems this implies that sometimes uh, in a situation we have to find the problem find the problem itself for example we may try to solve it by solving the symptoms and the outcomes of that problem but we do not solve we do not recognize and solve the real problem so uh, when uh, psychologists say ability to recognize problem they don't mean uh, this i mean for instance you are so that is yeah can you hear me now i think there was some network issue on yes sir i can hear you so uh, when we are saying ability to recognize problems uh, I, i'll answer this but let me also have the input from brinda she is saying something here sir i think the ability to recognize problem means uh, uh recognizing what exactly is given in a problem and what we need to find mm. see i want to distinguish here uh what uh, shubham was just saying that is not really when we say about recognizing problem for example if my uh, i'm working on a, an electronic device and my screen is flickering and then you find out which particular ic chip is uh, malfunctioning so is that the kind of uh, problem you have in mind shubham that is what you are saying that this finding the exact chip which is causing this problem is the ability to recognize problem oh uh, yes sir two others thing aditya your turn to speak hmm. yes sir uh, i think the ability of the, to recognize problems is rooted in understanding right if i know if i understand something then i would be able to see problems in it to give an historical example like at the end of the uh, 19 at the end of the 19th century uh, in physics there were many problems that uh, add up to uh, the discardation of classical physics so the people who, who we, we would of course term intelligent they were able to recognize those problems in the phys contemporary physics so basically the first part of it was just to recognize the problems that uh, uh, was plaguing uh, the physics of that time so i would uh, I, i would say that those people were intelligent in the sense that they understood it mm -hmm. in a much more uh, elaborate sense so as to recognize the problem they may not be able to propose the solutions but they were uh, intelligent enough to recognize the specific problems that had uh, plagued physics at that time so i would say that okay i got it pushpak you what what do you have to say it's also about analyzing uh, a situation supposedly you see something suppose that a man is walking on the road with a knife in hand so you see it's a problem so it's, so you uh, run behind him or maybe you call a call the police so it's also like you know that it's a problem over here you're right harsh sir i think recognizing a problem means uh, finding patterns in the pre existing patterns in a problem for example if a problem new problem can be broken down into uh some problems which already have solutions already have existing solutions and it is intelligence we have don't have to make a new solution for a for every pro problem every time we can just find the patterns of an older pre, pre or solved problem in a new problem no, no what we do about it is second when we are saying we are we are looking at the ability to recognize problems so we are not discussing what to do about it first is the ability of recognizing the problem so aditya sharma what you are saying is right but we don't have to go to the next aspect of it what to do about it will not be required maybe we don't require intelligence to to deal with it but have to recognize the problem first so your point of identifying patterns from what you observe is uh, is right so that is uh, i'll summarize this soon aditya sharma sir as i think having the basic knowledge regarding any topic is the main thing like while finding the problem like uh, if we get any problem like uh, regarding any topic at least we have the basic knowledge to figure it out like where we are getting 
problems or we are the stuck in India? No, no, no. I mean, when is the, you know the problem and you want to find the source of that problem. So that is what should be corrected. That if I know that my screen is flickering, this is the problem. And now you want to find out what is the source of this problem, why it is flickering. So perhaps I will go through a protocol, protocol but ability to recognize uh, the source of the problem is not the recognition of problem as such. So, but the ability to find something which we is not obvious, nobody has asked you that question, but you are still able to recognize the problem. Mohit, you have remained un unheard. Can you speak? Sir, according to me, recognizing a problem is... So please, one, one at a time, please. So uh, Mohit is speaking. Let him speak. Sir, according to me, recognizing a problem means uh, knowing your, your current state and knowing what is your goal state. And is that a problem or the solving thing is helping you to reach your goal state? Then that problem is your like positive problem for you to. I, I think you are already drawing your uh, thoughts from the agent-based modeling. Already you are trying to take this from there. But uh, um, we are trying to see here recognizing problems. So goal state and goal state is not... You do not have a goal state when you are trying to recognize problems. Goal state is to solve problems. The definition of a goal state and the initial state and the path to reach the goal state that happens in artificial intelligence, that is a standard formulation of the AI problem that will come later, but that is primarily the ability to solve problems or the methods to solve problems intelligently. That is what the uh, approach of initial state and the goal state and the path, best path to reach the goal state. That all comes in the group, uh, this group of ability to solve problems. But when I'm saying ability to recognize problems, there is no goal state as such. Nobody knows where you are reaching. And there is no uh, initial state, of course, state can be defined of a system, but that is not how the this aspect of uh, intelligence will be formulated. So summarizing of uh, what you said and uh, putting my own thoughts in it, ability to recognize problems is basically identifying patterns which were not obvious. Nobody asks you that question, but you still think that there's something wrong, it has to be fixed. So like you see somebody as uh, somebody gave an example, you see notice somebody having a knife and then you already you recognize there is a problem here. The prob that means you need to recognize this person should not be carrying a knife. This is some unusual thing happening here. So this observation of something unusual in your environment and, and noticing the problems or noticing the opportunities also is intelligence. So you see somebody's walking not right. Somebody can, you can say that you look tired. So you, you're, this is an ability to recognize problems. See, this is, nobody asked you if, this, am I looking tired? So nobody's asking you, but you still notice the person and you notice certain patterns. It. And so you recognize problem by interacting with the environment. So when you observe the environment around you, from these observations, your intelligence will, be, will flag certain things. These will not be flagged to everybody. If, you, if somebody has this kind of intelligence, he will be able to immediately recognize something is wrong. He may perhaps give you additional information about you or about your background, what has happened. They might notice something that the, your, your uh, uh, color button is not proper. Something is wrong, something is amiss. So this ability, in the absence of a question, in the absence of a goal state, you are still able to identify that in, in this environment, in the observations that I'm making, in the environment with which I'm interacting, there is something wrong and, or maybe some opportunity there. So ability to, I will include the in, uh, ability to recognize opportunity also in the ability to recognize problems in this. So this will also be intelligence in that sense. And uh, many, uh, all the, the, for instance, in the social context, it was says the uh, reformists see that there's an opportunity in this society. This society has this problem. This should not be there. So there, the first they will recognize a problem or you will say they will notice some health issue that this particular society has this particular health issue. So they recognize it and then there will be all the efforts to, to deal with it. How, now next question will be how to deal with it, what to do with it. Is it good or bad? So uh, if, is it, does it throw an opportunity to it? So it, then it, you might go to the next level, you might go to the problem solving stage and use some problem solving approaches to deal with those issues. So dealing with this, uh, with a goal state, with an objective in mind, you solve problems. In the absence of a goal, you recognize problems from the uh, environment. And uh, the first point that is there on the screen is very important. And the entire idea of machine learning is based on that. This is about uh, the, in, the ability to learn. When you present a lot of experiences to an individual, an intelligent person learns more. 
and a less intelligent person will learn less from the same set of experience. And this is what happens to the machines also. When machines are presented with a lost lot of data, certain models will learn, certain models will not learn. So the models which learn faster are intelligent models and models which cannot learn from the data or they cannot uh, um, model complex information that may be contained in this data will not be considered intelligent models. They may be very straightforward models. A linear model is not very intelligent model, for example, but a complex model, the intelligence models typically requires a, require complex uh, representation of your information that, that is that you glean from the environment. So I can summarize now that intelligence has three particular components. One is the ability to learn and the ability to learn is best reflected when we write the machine learning methods. But in the case of human intelligence, the ability to learn is like you, you give a lesson, you give certain observations, you place a person into experience. So like you may have heard this saying that experience is the best experience uh, is the worst school, but the fool learns in no other. Has any one of you heard this quote? Anybody, can you raise your hand if you have heard of this? This saying says the experience keeps a dear school, but the fool learns in no other. Aditya Sharma, yes. Can you explain what it means? Sir, experience give us more knowledge, like practical based knowledge, mm -hmm. like that. And uh, uh, many times we heard about that practical knowledge is better than bookish knowledge, is like that. So, no, no, it says experience, dear school means yes, expensive school. It is, a, yes, it is an expensive thing to learn. Yes. So, if you learn from experience, you may have already incurred some losses. For instance, you come across Sometimes people come across bad friends and you, yes, you learn from those bad friends that this should not be done. This should be done. When you touch the fire, you have the experience of fire and then you, you have now learned that you should not touch fire. So this is, again, intelligent person. Now here comes the ability to understand intelligence here. You see fire here and you see the fire, you bring your hand close and now you are experiencing the heat of the fire and you learn now that you should not bring your hand close to this particular thing, which is called fire. So you have now learned, you have, this is a learning from your experience. Now you will generalize it. Learning will, it is not just item by item you, you learn it. You will make an abstraction out of it. You will certain, make certain rules. If this is, this is a kind of thing and this is looking hot, so you should not bring your hand close to it. So this is only intelligent people will learn. But what this code that I gave you says is that experience is, a, is an expensive school, is a dear school. That means if you learn to stay away from fire after burning your hand, you have already paid a heavy price for learning. So it says that the fool, foolish people only learn after experience. Intelligent people should be able to learn from others' experience or from less experience. That is the point I'm trying to make. So an in, a, a more intelligent person here will be distinguished from less experienced person by the ability, by the ability to learn from less data. What kind of models he places in his mind to learn, how he recognizes how many times an information has to be presented to that person to learn something. If you have to memorize a text, how many times you have to read that text to be able to reproduce it. So uh, this is something that to perform certain tasks, what is the amount of data that you have to experience so that you learn it so that we can quantify it. And there are certain tests which are based on any of these abilities to assess how intelligent you are. So moving further, there are just, I think we have discussed it extensively. So there are three, aspects, pillars of intelligence, you can say that you learn from experience that we are just discussing. You recognize problems, that is you identify possible problems in the environment in which we interact and we solve the problems. So all three we have discussed in uh, de good details here. So in summary for today, what we learned is what, why people originally were interested in learning about intelligence. And we found that there are, the motivation was to rank children 
based on their intelligence and therefore give them a place in school, for example, and other decision making. Second is to give them the best approach or best method so that they can learn faster and they can learn more efficiently. In that context, we will be able to, we will need to also understand not just the intelligence, but also different differences in the personalities. So that is not part of intelligence, but intelligence is important. At what pace should I teach? So if I'm teaching English language, so should I teach A, B, C, D in the first day and the words and the vocabulary and the grammar the second day? How long should it take? So understanding intelligence and quantifying this in these terms is important, therefore, to plan a lesson, to plan an education, uh, educational uh, course. So this is why people are interested. And the third was to ability to solve, uh, to learn about how intelligence, intelligent people perform a certain task and teach that method to people who are not that gifted or that intelligent so that even people with lower intelligence can attain the same quality of life and quality of skill that a very intelligent people will do in, in some sense in that way, all the classes we give, all the educational training that we give is our, is, what we are trying to make is that we have formed certain rules, intelligent people do certain things this way. We copy those rules, we, bar, we frame certain rules from them and we, we hope everybody would be able to do the same way so that they can follow the um, intelligent methods of performing certain tasks. So, but then there is a limitation to this. And for that, I would uh, refer you to a popular book, which is The Bed of Procrustes uh, by Nassim Talib. That book says that the same method cannot fit everybody. So this, I will um, basically conclude this lecture with this uh, interesting concept that in the Greek mythology, there was some bed in, a, in the house of Procrustes and every guest who used to come, he used to ask them to sleep on this bed. If the person was taller than bed, that bed, he used to cut his legs to just fit the bed. And if the person was shorter than the bed, he would stretch his legs so that he can fit into the bed. So in an attempt, to, follow, to borrow the rules of what we think are the intelligent rules or intelligent ways of doing things, sometimes we might be inadvertently trying to place, do the same thing that we are trying to make everybody the same, trying to fit everybody in this bed. So that is not an intelligent way because everybody is different and they don't have, the, they don't have to sleep in the same bed or they don't have to be the same size of the bed. So with these uh, thoughts in mind, we'll proceed to the next lecture and try to understand intelligence more. Uh, again, finally, before I close, I'll take any of your comments and, and if uh, any other thoughts which we have missed or questions. Excellent. I think uh, it was a very good class. I'm, I'm very glad that you're, you're confident of what you want to say and your inputs were very good and you understand things very well.